I'm Doug Landreth of Photomorphous, and I'm particularly excited to share this fun tutorial with you that'll show you how to make a gorgeous multi-image composite without the use of a camera. Yep, you heard me correctly. I have always loved toying with alternative photographic techniques and using a flatbed scanner to scan objects like flowers, old books, and antique objects is a fun, simple method of obtaining some really cool images for a composite. I used an Epson flatbed scanner to scan these flowers that I picked up at a local market. But if you don't have a dedicated flatbed scanner, you can always use one of those printers with a scanner function. And if you don't have a scanner or access to one, you can always rig up a simple copy setup with your iPhone or a regular camera. However, this tutorial doesn't require that you have a scanner because I'll primarily be showing you the process of building the composite with On One software. And we've provided you with all the images that you need to create this composite so that you can follow along with the tutorial. In addition to scanning the flowers, I found some other fun surfaces to scan while I was dreaming up this image. I scanned part of an old Chinese scroll and some old distressed pages from a book and the inside of a Chinese chess set that I had picked up in my travels. And I used all these images to create this background for our composite. And to limit the tutorial time in length, I'll begin after I've created the background image and we'll add the flowers into the composite. Okay? So the first step is to select this background image in the browse module. So wherever you've put it on your computer or you downloaded it, go ahead and select it in the browse module and open it into the layers module by clicking on the layers module icon. Now my idea for the composite is to segment this background into sort of a triptych image utilizing some kind of a border overlay uh, against the background, dividing it into three segments for each of the flowers. So I'll select the Extras tab and click on the My Extras folder, and then select the Borders folder, where I've got all my borders stored. I've imported a group of borders that we carry in our store called the Photomorphous Textural Borders Volume 2 collection. So I'll select it and then I'll choose this number 10 border and drag it into the background and select Add as Layer. If you've previously purchased this border product from Photomorphous, you'll find it here as well. But for the purposes of this tutorial, you can use the Files tab to browse to the location where you've placed the folder containing the tutorial files and then just drag it in from there. I'll close the navigation pane to get a little bit more image real estate, and then I'll select the Move tool to position and scale the border. I'll zoom out a little bit, then I'll scale it to fit the height of the background. And then I'll position it over on the left side. I'll zoom back in to fit the window, and then adjust the width of the border image with this side handle so that it is approximately a third of the background width, and hit the Apply button. Then, I'll create a duplicate of that layer with the Duplicate Layer button, and with the Move tool still selected, position this new border, and I want it to look a little different, so I'll use the Flip Vertical button to flip the image top to bottom, and then tweak its position a bit, and then hit Apply. Then, I'll make a new duplicate border layer and repeat the process. I'll arrange the border, to fit with the others, and I'll use the flip vertical button again to make it different. You could also use the horizontal flip too, if you like. I'll work to get them all aligned so that the overlap looks good, and at the same time I'll adjust their widths to be pretty much the same, around 800 and, or 1870 pixels, and I'll use the width field entry up here in the Move Tool Options bar to do that, selecting each layer in turn till they all fit just right. Then I'll select the top layer and use the Merge Layers button to merge it down and do it once more until I have all three borders on a single layer. So with all the borders now on a single layer, I'll go ahead and scroll through some of these blending modes to see which one I prefer. And for now, I think I'll choose Linear Light. So that's looking good, and now it's usually a pretty good idea to periodically save your work, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And then it's time to add the flower images. So I'll open the navigation panel, 
and select the Files tab. Then I'll steer to the folder with the source files and open it. I'll grab the flower group image and drag it onto the background image and say add it as a layer. Then I'll close the navigation panel and select the Move tool to position and scale the flower image into the background. I'll hit Command or Control minus a couple of times to reduce the uh, image size so that I can see the handles and then holding down the Shift and Option key I can scale the flower image to fit the background. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there and I'll hit apply and then I'll zoom back in again to fit the window so I can see what I'm doing. Then I'll use the blending drop down to select the multiply blending mode. In multiply mode the white background won't show allowing me to make final adjustments to the layer placement of the flowers. Then I'll change the blending mode back to normal and work at masking out the white background. First, I'll drag the quick mask brush around the outside of the flowers to quickly subtract the white background. Then I'll scale the brush size down with the bracket keys and drag the brush through some of the smaller areas of the white background, working to just touch the white background and none of the flower tones. With the bulk of the work done by the quick mask brush, I'll grab the refine mask brush and trace around the flower ed edges a bit to perfect the mask. Now, if it subtracts too much of the image, like these stems, I'll select the normal masking brush and zoom into 100%. I'll change the brush mode to paint in, and I'll scale the brush size and feather, and then quickly replace those areas. These tones from the background and the white background and the stem are very, very similar. And so it looks like I've painted back in some of the background. So what I'll do is just use the X key to switch it back to uh, paint out. And then you can use a real narrow feather and just use a shift click and just draw straight lines um, to get into those tight spots uh, nice and accurately. So after fixing any obvious issues, I recommend staying zoomed in to 100% and going around the image using the various masking tools to really fine tune your image mask. And one of my favorite tools is the normal masking brush with the perfect brush option turned on. I'll just go around the image using the X key to toggle between paint in and paint out and work to refine the mask. The perfect brush reads and responds to the color directly under the center plus or minus for replacing or eliminating those tones. And when the tones and colors are too close, I'll just use a small regular brush and freehand or shift click along an edge until it looks just right. The flower scans created subtle drop shadows behind the leaves and stems, but they look unnatural with the image in normal mode against the background because they're not darkening the surface behind. So instead of masking them out and creating a shadow, I like to change the blending mode of the layer to multiply, which provides a great blending effect and adds the background texture into the flowers. One issue is that the flowers gain density from the background, so it works best on a lighter toned background like this. Even with a light toned background, the flowers might need to be lightened. And a favorite method of mine for doing this is to duplicate the layer and change its blending mode to soft light. That really pops the flowers off the background and it makes it blend with the textural background beautifully. Now it's time to do the same thing with the single flower image, which I'll put into the other bordered areas. So I'll open the navigation pane and select the flower and drag the image onto my composite selecting Add as a layer, and repeat the scaling and masking process. This time, showing you some other masking tool options. First, I'll scale the flower down, and then I'll change its blending mode to multiply. I'll make it the same relative size as the middle blossoms, and then move it into position in the left-hand panel, and change it back to normal blending mode so that I can outline it. I'll use the quick mask tool first and trace around the flower to eliminate most of the background. Then I'll grab the regular masking brush with the perfect mask option turned on and work to further eliminate uh, these white areas. 
I don't have to be really critical because of the layer blending that I'll be doing. Um, the tones under that small minus sign are the ones being masked, so I just move along the edges of the flower, removing the white tones and leaving the slightly darker tones of the shadows. Now, in this instance, it's creating an unnatural edge, but no worries, because next, I'll grab the mask blur brush and blur the edges of the mask with the mode set to mask out. This creates a really nice smooth mask edge where the shadow tones will blend with the background. And again, if I go too far into the image, I'll just grab the masking brush with the perfect brush set and paint the area back in. So I'll work to get the mask looking good. And then again, select the multiply blending mode and you can see the soft shadows that this produced. Then, like I did before, I'll make a duplicate of this flower layer and change its blending mode to soft light to pop the image again. Great! Now, to add the flower to the right side of the composite, I'll just use a copy of the same flower. I'll make a duplicate of this flower's multiply flower layer and choose the Move Transform tool and then flip it horizontally. Then I'll grab it and move it over to the right side of the frame. I'll move this new layer to the top of the layer stack and then again I'll make a duplicate of the layer and say apply to the transformation then set that new layer to soft light so that we've got the same effect in all the flowers and we've got something pretty rich looking going on right here. One thing that's bothering me though is this sort of dark spot right above and tangent to the flowers. So I'll select the background layer and choose the magic eraser and just brush over the area uh, and um, get rid of it. Make a couple of stabs at it and it's looking a whole lot better. Okay, so I think the overall image is looking pretty great, but I'd like to add some additional texture over the whole image to add just a little bit more complexity to the textural quality of it. So I'll open the navigation panel and steer to the folder with the source files in it, and I'll drag in this texture from our Photomorphous Blend Kit Volume 2. I'll tell the software to add it as a layer, and because I had the background layer selected, it'll be placed right above that bottom layer. Then I'll close the navigation panel, and with the Move tool selected, I'll click on the Rotate button to rotate it 90 degrees, and then the Fit Canvas. Then I'll grab one of the side panels and hold the Option key down and stretch the sides out to fit the texture to the image canvas. Then uh, I'll play with the blending modes for this layer to see what works the best. And I'm thinking that that's going to be the Multiply mode except it is a bit dark. So I'll just back off a little on the opacity of the layer to reduce it, which feels um, quite a bit better. Then I'd like to see if a different blending mode would work better for the border image. And I think that multiply works well here as well. Okay, so it's still a little dark. So I'll show you a bit of a trick with a solid color layer. I'm going to want to affect the two background layers, so I'll select this top texture layer prior to selecting the solid color layer icon. Now when I select the icon, the color fill layer dialog box opens, which will allow you to choose a fill color and set a blending mode and opacity for this fill color layer. You can see that this white fill set to soft light blending mode has already lightened the background considerably. So if you click on the fill color in the dialog box, a color picker window will open, allowing you to choose any other color. You can see the effects right away. I'll close the color picker because I want to use white for this effect. And as you can see, you can select the blend mode from the dialog box and you'll see its effect immediately too, which is really cool. So I'll stay with soft light with the opacity set to 100 and click OK. Now what I'd really like is if the background was brighter behind the flowers and then faded to darker tones toward the edges. I can accomplish this by creating a mask with a vignette. To do that, I'll grab the masking bug and choose the vignette preset and click in the center of the image. Well, I should have 
chosen edges for the shape instead of center and I would have gotten the effect that I wanted immediately but that's okay I'll just transform the mask to get it looking correct and now I'll use the mask invert mask menu command to get the effect that I'm after and that looks great now because this whole layer is providing this effect if I want to change the shape of the effect I can click the masking bug icon again and use the controls for the mask in the usual way but I can also use the move tools transform capabilities to move and stretch the entire layer and I can see its effect without the masking bugs tool overlay sort of getting in the way so it's kind of a nice trick first I'll shrink the image canvas to give myself room to work then I'll select the move tool and you can see as I reshape the um, layer the lightning effect is you know moved a bit higher and wider um, just by using these transform controls on the layer itself so that looks great the last thing I like to do after I've got the composite put together is to take it into the effects module for some sort of overall treatment now to do this I'll select the very top layer of the stack and use the layer new stamp layer menu command to create a composite layer of the image as it stands now I'll fit the image to the window again and double click the layer name and title the layer composite so I've got it somewhat organized then before taking the layer into the effects module I always do two things I select the trim tool which is the pair of scissors in the crop tool section and select the entire image canvas and click OK this will trim away any of the layers which extend past the image canvas so I'll see only the image within the canvas boundaries in the effects module the other thing I always do is to click the gear icon to convert the layer to a smart layer then I'll click the effects module icon to take the layer into the effects module with the new photo raw I can use both the develop and the effects modules to apply treatments to the layer which makes it really convenient I've added some adjustments by adding a little bit of glow to the image as well as some slight tonal and color adjustments and I've saved these settings out as a preset which you received in your downloads I'll click the preset tab and then steer to the preset category which is photomorphous bonus preset select that category and, and it opens up to reveal the preset so then just click the preset to apply it to the image of course you can use the preset as a starting point and modify any of the settings for any of the filters to fine-tune it to your liking when you're happy with it click the done button and you'll be returned to the layers module and you'll see the effects and develop settings have been appended to the smart layer giving you the opportunity at a later date to double click these settings and adjust them should you wish I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and picked up some handy post-processing tips along the way. I love playing with this type of image composite and these source files are really quite easy to create using your scanner as an image capture device which is fun. I should mention that our Photomorphous website has a ton of other great tutorials as well as a huge assortment of other borders and textures which you might like to play with. So be sure and visit us at www.photomorphous.com. I want to thank you for joining me today. This is Doug Landreth of Photomorphous wishing you much success in your creative pursuits.